Today, we're gonna be trying something a little bit different. We're gonna be baking our 3D prints. That's right, our resin 3D prints. We're gonna be putting them inside of a toaster oven and heating them up for about an hour to see what happens to our 3D prints if it adds a little bit more rigidity to them. CNC Kitchen actually did a video specifically on this topic and how it was able to add a good bit more strength to his prints and even found out that you don't even need to cure it and heat it at the same time. If you just cure it normally and then go off and try and bake it for a little while to add a little bit more heat to it, it will end up hardening and adding a little bit more rigidity to your resin 3D prints. And to test this out, we're gonna be using one of my favorite resins, which is Elegoo's Rapid Resin. This is just a basic resin that you can find over on Amazon. It allows you to print really fast and it is really rigid. However, I'm not quite sure how this will hold up to being dropped or trying to be broken or bent or anything like that. The other is a brand new resin from Atlas 3D. This is actually something that they launched over on Kickstarter, I think a month or two ago. I have one of the samples here of their new Hercules resin, and it's specifically designed for this project in mind. So you resin 3D print it, you're gonna cure it, and then you're gonna bake it for about one hour. Now let's get some prints up and running on the Elegoo Saturn IV Ultra and the Saturn IV. I'm gonna be using the Saturn IV Ultra with this new Hercules resin, and I have to say, it has a really nice smell to this resin. It has like an oaky, smoky smell to it. It's really nice. And while these test prints are up and running, I want to say a big thank you to Elegoo for sponsoring today's video. They are the makers of the Elegoo Saturn IV and the Saturn IV Ultra. These are some amazing mid-size resin 3D printers that have auto bed leveling, some smart sensors built into them, and the Saturn IV Ultra prints incredibly fast with its tilting bat mechanism. They also sent me something new and fun to test out, but I can't show it off in today's video. Make sure you tune back in next week to see this in action. And if you're in the LA area, I'm actually gonna be at the Rapid TCT event with Elegoo along with Frankly Built, showing off some of their 3D printers and just hanging out and talking with people that are there. It really is wild to me just how much faster the tilting VAT mechanism is for printing on the Saturn IV Ultra compared to just the standard way of printing. The Saturn IV is a great machine machine, but this just prints so much faster. This took one hour and 39 minutes to print. These were both started at the same time. This has at least another hour to go for this print. It's only at 37% complete for this print. Also, these are looking really good. I also wanted to mention that the resin, that toasty smell that it has is just I really enjoy it. I don't know what it is, but it's the smell of it is just kind of like a toasty, woody smell. All right, let's see how these prints come. Oh my gosh, that's popping off so seamlessly here with the flex to this resin. That is really nice. Oh my goodness. That is the easiest print that I've had to remove from this textured build plate. And we still need to clean off these resin 3D prints with some IPA before curing them as well as heating them up to really test them out. So I'm gonna be using some dirty IPA to start and then thoroughly cleaning them in a fresh batch of new IPA. So these are cleaned in brand new IPA and the prints themselves look fantastic off of the Saturn IV Ultra in this resin. I'm liking the dark pigment that it provides, not just a flat gray, it's a little bit of a, uh, just a darker gray than what I'm used to printing with. So this is a nice little change. You can definitely feel the flexibility in this as well, even before we've cured anything. I think that's semi-normal with a bunch of resins, but you can really feel how squishy this particular resin is these uh, once these prints have been printed. I can't believe how easily I was able to get those prints free from these supports. Now I know that's a combination of how Loot Studios has actually supported these files, but I honestly was not expecting this guy right here to come off of the supports so easily and have the elasticity that's here for this and the parts to not rip or tear as I was removing those supports. There are so many tiny intricate details on this print. I'm just so surprised that it was able to all hold it together with this new resin. I mean, even look at the supports that came off the prints and how malleable these are. Again, this is all before curing. So let's throw these in the curing station while these continue to air dry. 
So this is after three minutes of curing, it's still pretty malleable here. Extreme bendage, I would say. Here's after six minutes of curing. All right, I was able to split that one in half. And finally, here is the 10 minute cured version. You know, it's still got a lot of elasticity to it. So I think I'm gonna stick with their recommended 10 minute cure time in the UV chamber there. Just for comparison, here is some regular supports that I got off an, I don't know, an old print there. This hasn't been cured yet. And if I try to, oh, yeah, it just immediately snaps. It's nowhere near as flexible as the other one here. And three hours and 15 minutes later, our other prints off of the Saturn IV have finished. Now, just to give you some, some perspective of how much faster this is printing, I was able to fully print these, get them cleaned up, sports removed. This is now curing right here. We did some tests with it as well with the different supports. Yeah, this, is a great machine, but this right here just prints so incredibly fast because of this tilting mechanism here. And here's a look at the Elegoo Rapid Resin prints. These haven't been cured yet, and you can see here where some of the parts did not make it through the support removal process. Some of these are very, very delicate and hard to handle. So I was kind of expecting that, especially with this guy right here. These also have a little bit of give to them here before we go off and cure them, but nowhere near as elastic as what we were seeing with the Hercules resin. Like this guy here, I can kind of bend that arm with the gun, but if I put too much pressure on it, it's just gonna snap. And with this standard rapid resin from Elegoo, I never cure it for more than three minutes in the UV chamber, so that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm not gonna let these sit for 10 minutes at a time. That's really gonna end up being overkill and make these even more brittle than what they should be. And now the part that I've been really excited to try out, which is baking our resin 3D prints. Again, these are washed and cured, and I have a subsection of these prints that we're gonna be taking and baking in this old toaster oven that I have. So I've preheated this to 250 degrees based on their recommendations. And what we're gonna end up doing is taking some of the files, setting them aside and not baking them at all. We're gonna, we're gonna take another set of the files and bake them for one hour at 250 degrees Fahrenheit. And then we're gonna take the last set of files and bake those at 275 degrees Fahrenheit, again, based on some of their further recommendations. I've also put little identifiers on the bottom of the prints just to make sure that I don't get them confused. And thankfully, it's really easy just to visually differentiate the two files based on the different colors of them. One is slightly darker than the other. Also, you can definitely tell one is much more rigid than the other. All right, let's load these on up in there. This is such a crazy concept. All right, it's been an hour for these at 275. Ow, 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 that's hot. It's kind of crazy how flexible this is while it's still hot. These, on the other hand, are much stiffer. Now, I might have gone a little overboard with this next one, but it is a resin 3D printed airless basketball with this Hercules resin. We're gonna test this out and see after baking it and cleaning it up, how well this bounces. I honestly wasn't sure if this was gonna print properly or not with the minimal amount of supports that I put just on the bottom. There's nothing inside the basketball. Unfortunately, because of the build volume limitations of the Saturn IV Ultra, it is on the smaller side. I would be interested, once I get some more of this resin on hand, printing it on the Jupiter. Here's another great example of the Hercules print that hasn't been cured yet and just how flexible this is. This is a pretty thick print and it's just extremely flexible with the blade of the sword. And even after curing these for, this was cured for five minutes in the UV chamber, it still has a whole lot of flex to it. 
I almost prefer this without baking it, just with how flexible it is, And uh, but we're still gonna heat this up and give it a test. And here's the first set of baked prints. Well, I should say the first one here is not baked. This one is also not baked. Then we have 250, 275, 250, 275. And here's the second set of prints that were baked again. No baked, 250, 275. No baking, 250, 275. These feel so much crispier than these. These still have a little bit of give and flex to them, whereas these are just super rigid. I think a great example of this, if we take a look at this cable here, this is the unbaked version, and this is just UV cured, and it is really malleable. At 250, it's a whole lot stiffer, and at 275, it almost doesn't wanna budge, but it's still got a little give to it. Now the Rapid, on the other hand, there's almost, <laughs> No budging right here. This is the uh, uncure, or this is the no baked version. The 250, this cable snapped at some point, I think during the support removal process. Oh, and that just broke off. And two, uh, yep, 275. <laughs> And while we've got a few other prints baking, let's start our drop test. And to do the drop test, I figured let's drop them from someplace high, like here on top of the Elogu Orange Storm Giga, onto the floor. So first up, let's test out these guys. This one is the uncured resin. That was okay. Looking good, no damage. Next up is baking at 250. Also good. No damage. I need to maybe drop this on something that's a little bit of a harder surface. And this is 275. Oh, yeah, that guy shattered. All right, this guy at 275, he snapped at, it looked like his ankles there, and then the cape also broke off on the back of the print. Let's also give this 275 print a little squeeze. Yeah, doesn't take much effort. Actually, that's the arms, no, there we go. <laughs> Maybe it's just all about the, the angle and it just snaps. Here's the 250 again. Yeah, that just immediately, there's no, there's no flex to this. I mean, obviously the arm is gonna be the weakest point here, but actually that's 250, that's really, I can't break that. I can't break his arm right there. Maybe I gotta push from another. Maybe 250 is the sweet spot for your standard resins. And then here's just the UV cured. Yeah, again, I, I, the, the gun's gonna break off really easily. Yeah, the gun is just snap because they're so thin. But this is still pretty strong. Oh yeah, I just broke his ankles there. It's whatever the weakest point is, is obviously gonna be where it's gonna be breaking. Now let's test out the Hercules prints. This is again, the unbaked print. As far as I can tell, nothing, nothing happened there. Yeah, this still looks good. Let's give this one a, oh my goodness. Yeah, I love how much flex there is to this without baking it. That's just wild to me, look at that. The other prints just immediately snapped with the slightest bit of pressure. This, on the other hand, is lots of wiggle. I almost prefer the non-baked, but I guess we'll, we'll we'll test these out here. This is the 250 print, so let's drop him. Again, nothing, nothing snapped off, nothing broke here, and it still has some give there. Oh, there we go. It was a little bit more pressure, and that blaster broke this one. Oh, there we go. Just a it's got a little bit of give there, a little bit of give, but uh, it's, it'll definitely snap if you wiggle it too much. All right, let's test out the 275 print. Oh no! <laughs> yeah, that one, The it broke at the ankle here. The rest of the print did not. At 275, let's test out the guns there. It's still got a bit, of, yeah, it's still got a, a little bit of give, but it's gonna snap. I think more easily than the 250. The rest of the print is really rigid and solid though. Now this one should be a lot of fun since there are so many little intricate details on this. This is the unbaked print, just UV cured. <laughs> that just obliterated into a bunch of parts. Yeah, that, that did not fare well. All right, here we go at 250. <laughs> These are all just gonna absolutely get destroyed as soon as you drop them. There's so many little intricate parts that it's just, oh my goodness, lots of shatter points for these. And 275. 
<laughs> oh my goodness, I'm gonna have so many small bits to clean up here. Really scientific experiment here, but I figure a lot of folks, if you're printing minis, you're afraid of dropping them and what happens with the resin 3D prints. So here's a great example of that. Now it's time for the Hercules. So the unbaked, nothing. That just kind of bounced. That was fantastic. Look at those, everything's still intact. Here's the 250. Again, just bounced. This is awesome. Here's 275. Oops, and I dropped it again by accident. I, honestly, this resin is really impressing me with how rigid and still having a little bit of give to the prints. So this is, yeah, anything, this is the 275, so it's gonna break if you put a little too much pressure on it, but a lot better than the standard resins. Yeah, I, I almost prefer the unbaked version of this because they are just so much more rubber-like with their uh, their feel. So I, it depends on what you're going for. If you're going for something a lot more rigid, obviously go ahead and bake them. It's gonna add some strength to that. But uh, the unbaked version is equally just as good. And here's a look at the mystery printer print that I ran. And this one is much larger in scale than the other miniatures. And I would say the, uh, the print quality turned out fantastic on it. Also take a look at this. This is the swords. I didn't fully bake these. I only baked the upper torso and the swords for I think 30 minutes at 250 degrees. And there's still a good bit of give to these prints. And let's test out our airless basketball after it cools down. It's so hot in there. I almost don't want to smash this after it cools down. This Hercules resin ended up working out, I think, pretty well for its intended purposes here of adding some more rigidity as well as elasticity to these 3D prints. Certainly fared a lot better than the standard resin that I'm typically used to working with. However, this is significantly more expensive. Again, it's not available till the end of the summer here. I should also mention that it comes in these one and a half kilogram bags here. So you're getting a slightly larger amount of resin than you normally would with your standard bottles of resin. And before we give this airless basketball a test, I want to say a big thank you to all my Patreon supporters for your continued support of me making content here on the interwebs. If you're interested in things like my resin 3D printer settings, you can find those over in my Patreon. And one last look at this before I give it a bounce and more than likely shatter it, but fingers crossed this actually works pretty well. All right, let's see how this goes. Whoa, oh my goodness. <laughs> That's for sure gonna crack. That bounces, oh, there we go. No one is immune to the airless basketball test of cracking goodness. One of these days, we'll find something that works really well for this project. <laughs> Yeah, split right down the center. And let me know in the comments down below if you're gonna try this for yourself. It's definitely a fun little experiment that I think everybody should test out, but make sure you're not doing it in any oven or toaster oven that you're actively gonna be eating in. You don't wanna do that. Make sure you're picking up something from a garage sale or Facebook marketplace or just buying one. Hey, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.